A few weeks ago, I made a video covering some secrets from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, which you should check out if you haven't yet, and it seemed like you guys enjoyed it. So I thought it would be fun to maybe do the same thing for the other Pokemon generations as well, and maybe make it into a series if it continues to do well enough. So that's what we're here to do today with the Kanto-based games, as I take a look at 25 secrets from this part of the Pokemon world that you may not know about. To start us off, did you know that Snorlax is actually indirectly based on Kirby from the Kirby games? Snorlax's Japanese name is Kabigon, which comes from the nickname of a programmer at Game Freak, Koji Nishino. Nishino is the direct inspiration for Snorlax due to his reputation for having a large appetite, and because of this, he earned the nickname Kirby from Game Freak staff, after Kirby the Nintendo character. Additionally, what is most likely a very early beta version of Snorlax can be seen in some documentation from Pokemon Red and Blue's development, which not only more closely resembles Kirby, and Koji Nishino for that matter, but also has the name Kabin, which is very close to Snorlax's Japanese name, meaning that all of this is in fact very likely connected together. Additionally, while it very well could just be a coincidence and mean nothing whatsoever, it's worth pointing out that the shape of Snorlax's facial pattern resembles Pac-Man, yet another iconic video game character that, just like Kirby and Snorlax, is known for its eating. In the original Pokemon Red and Green, it's actually possible to prevent yourself from progressing any further into the game past Viridian City. During the opening sequence where you get your starter and go to grab Oak's parcel from the Viridian City Pokemart, if you manage to evolve your starter during this time, before delivering Oak's parcel to him, the game will actually consider you to already have the Pokedex once you finally deliver the parcel, and thus you won't be able to actually receive a Pokedex from Professor Oak, which makes the rest of the game past Viridian City inaccessible to the player. Speaking of Viridian City, the leader of the gym in this town is none other than Giovanni, and while Giovanni's name is inspired by the fact that he is the leader of the Mafia-like Team Rocket, it also likely comes from the term Geo, referring to his ground-type specialty. The other Viridian City gym leader, meanwhile, Blue, has a unique connection to the city that also involves his name. While Blue is named as such internationally, his name is actually Green in Japan, due to the original Pokemon games there being Red and Green instead of Red and Blue. With that said, it's extremely fitting that Blue is the gym leader in Viridian City of all places, as Viridian is a color that is a mixture of Blue and Green. While we're on the subject of Blue, he's obviously primarily known for being what is known as a jerk rival. Basically, a rival that actually acts as a rival and antagonizes you, as opposed to other rivals in the series which are more friendly. In the original games, Blue doesn't beat around the bush when it comes to being a jerk towards you, but originally, he was going to be even more savage. Courtesy of website The Cutting Room Floor, unused text within the original Kanto games shows that Blue originally had unique victory dialogue, meaning if he defeated you, for each battle that you face him in, and some of it is especially harsh. For example, if Blue defeated you during your second battle with him on Route 22 prior to facing the Pokemon League, he would have said, Ha ha ha, player, that's your best? You're nowhere near as good as me, pal. Go train some more, you loser. And during the champion battle with him, if he defeated you, he would have said, Ha ha ha, I won, I won, I'm too good for you, player. You did well to even reach me, the Pokemon genius. Nice try, loser. Ha 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 ha. There's also some more unused text within the Gen 1 games as well, that bring about some very interesting possibilities. Courtesy of the cutting room floor once again, there's unused text in the games that offers the choice between different directions, such as north, south, east, or west. 
It's unknown what this would have been used for, but it was obviously for something specific. Meanwhile, there is also unused text for what appears to be an unused field move, like an HM. When triggered, the text says, Ground rose up somewhere. This description doesn't sound like it belongs to any of the field moves in Gen 1, or even any of the other ones in future games for that matter, but its function sounds like it could have been similar to Rock Climb, and could have possibly allowed you to reach areas that were higher up off the ground by raising the ground with this move. Since we're on the topic of cut content though, let's jump ahead a few years and look at Pokemon Sun and Moon. While Sun and Moon aren't Kanto games, they do have a lot of connections to Kanto, such as the player character originally being from the Kanto region. Additionally, there was recently a model of a cut beta protagonist for Sun and Moon that was discovered via a leak, and interestingly, it looks strikingly similar to Chase, the male protagonist from the Let's Go games. Both have extremely similar looking hats, similar hairstyles, similar shirts, similar backpacks, and an overall very similar color scheme to their designs. Given this similarity, and the fact that the Let's Go games came out directly after the Alola games, it's possible that this beta Alola protagonist, after being cut, was repurposed and reworked into Chase for the Let's Go games. Speaking of the Let's Go games, there's actually a mystery Pokémon in these titles that we never get to see. The third starter Pokémon at Oak's Lab. As is usually the case in Pokemon games, Professor Oak has three starter Pokemon for you to choose from at the beginning of the games, and in Let's Go, they are Pikachu, Eevee, and one other Pokemon who is present inside of a Pokeball on the table in Oak's lab, but unfortunately, we don't get to see who it is. The intrigue of this comes from the fact that the starters in this game are obviously atypical, so it would be really interesting to be able to see who is apparently being offered as a starter Pokémon alongside Pikachu and Eevee. Now, this next one is a bit different, but it very much appeals to me personally, so I hope you guys find it cool too. I absolutely love the official artwork of Pokemon games, and there is a bunch of old official Gen 1 artwork that many people probably have never seen before simply because it is old Gen 1 artwork. Stuff like artwork of the SSN ticket, the town map, the card key from Silphco, the old amber, the bike voucher, the coin case, and more are all pieces of official art that most people probably haven't seen, simply because it's old artwork of items that doesn't really get shared around that much. But personally, I think it's cool as heck to see art like this that is brand new to me, but is still that old and comes from the original games. So I wanted to throw it in this video, and hopefully you guys find it cool too. One of these pieces of artwork also leads into another cool Kanto secret, and that is that the Kanto games are actually pretty significantly inspired by the Earthbound franchise. For example, the Safari Zone quest of finding the Warden's Dentures is based on a very similar quest from Earthbound Beginnings, also known as Mother in Japan. Additionally, the Pokemon Mewtwo seems pretty clearly to have been inspired design-wise by Gygus, the main antagonist of Earthbound, and the music that plays at the Indigo Plateau is almost identical to the theme of Mount Itoi from Earthbound Beginning. These similarities originate from the fact that the Earthbound franchise was developed by Ape Inc., which later became Creatures Inc., who became involved with Pokémon by helping to finish the development of the original games, and who now owns one-third of Pokémon's copyright. And on the subject of things about Kanto you may not have ever seen before, there's also an entire location in Kanto you may have never heard of before either. 
Rock Mountain. Rock Mountain is a location in Kanto that is unfortunately never made accessible in full, but we do explore it in parts, in the form of Rock Tunnel and Routes 9 and 10. When it comes to this mountain, you mostly just hear the name of Rock Tunnel and not the mountain itself, but an entire mountain that plays host to the Rock Tunnel that is known as Rock Mountain is canon to the series, as not only is Rock Tunnel known as Rock Mountain Tunnel in Japan, but the name Rock Mountain has also been used in Pokemon Pinball, in the official Pocket Monsters Encyclopedia book, and in Pokemon Adventures. And the mountain itself can even be seen on Kanto's various region maps. As the first ever Pokemon region, Kanto had a lot of stuff about it that was changed and switched around during the development process, but one of these things is surprising even by that standard. When looking at the various in-game maps from very, very early into the game's development, back when it was still known as Capsule Monsters, it can be seen that the roles of Celadon City and Vermilion City were actually switched compared to what they are in the final games, as here, Celadon City is a port town and Vermilion City is the big metropolis where the Game Freak headquarters are located, as can be seen thanks to this sign that is present that features the Game Freak logo. Celadon City is interesting for another reason as well, that being that it could potentially be the hometown of the Johto Elite Four member, Karen. While it's never specifically stated where she's actually from, she could indeed be from Celadon City due to the fact that she is a member of Johto's Elite Four, which shares a Pokemon League with Kanto, and that every single one of Karen's Pokemon in the original Johto games can be found, and pretty much can only be found, in and around Celadon City, with Umbreon coming from an Eevee, which can only be obtained in Celadon City in the Kanto games, Gengar obviously coming from a Ghastly in the nearby Pokemon Tower, Vileplume coming from Oddish, which can be found on Route 7 just outside of Celadon, and Murkrow and Houndoom, who, as a Houndour, can both be found on Route 7 as well. And other than Route 16 in Murkrow's case, this is the only place that you can find these two Pokemon in the original Johto games, which seems to tie Karen to the Celadon City area pretty significantly. One Pokemon you can find just down the road from Celadon in the Fuchsia City Safari Zone is Rhyhorn, and it evolves, of course, into Rhydon. Rhydon is absolutely iconic in Kanto, because if you haven't noticed, there are statues of it everywhere. This might seem kind of odd considering that Rhydon is just a regular Pokemon and there's nothing particularly special about it, but that is only true in the game world. The reason why these statues are in fact present is most likely due to the fact that Rhydon was the first Pokemon ever created. Another interesting thing about Rhydon is that it could have possibly been considered to be the mascot of the entire Pokemon franchise at one point. Not only was it the first Pokemon ever created as previously mentioned, and therefore would be a natural choice, but in an early pre-release logo for the games, Rhydon is featured front and center. And if Rhydon was going to be in the logo for the games at that point, you would naturally have to assume that it was at least considered to be the face of the games for a time, before Pikachu, of course, ultimately took over that role. Especially because Pokemon, as creatures, were originally a lot more kaiju-like and monster-like before they started adding in all of the cuter Pokemon. So, while the series was in more of this monstrous kaiju-like state, Rhydon would have definitely made a lot of sense to be considered as the possible mascot. An additional insane thing about the series in its early days, which in my opinion could have resulted in the series eventually dying off altogether if it hadn't happened this way, is the fact that the literal name of the series itself, Pokemon, originates entirely from the series' localization into English. As you probably know, Pokemon is short for Pocket Monsters, and the term Pocket Monsters is what is often used to refer to the series in Japan. 
Pocket Monsters was also intended to be used when the series was brought over to the West as well, but this hit a bit of a snag due to the similarly named series, Monster in My Pocket. So, due to legal issues, Pocket Monsters couldn't be used in English, so it was ultimately decided to use the term Pokemon instead as a portmanteau of Pocket Monsters. And the rest from there is history. In my opinion, this unintentional move actually saved Pokemon in the long run, because creating a unique original word like Pokemon as the title for your series made the series more unique, original, identifiable, and iconic, which helps immensely with branding and I think has definitely been a huge part in why Pokemon got so popular and why it's been able to stay so popular as well. It wasn't like the English localizers just pulled Pokemon out of thin air, though. Portmanteaus of the term Pocket Monsters were being used in Japan as well, however, prior to this localization, Pokemon was actually being mostly referred to as Pokemon, with a CK spelling. This was seen in a number of different places, and even in the anime, and ultimately it wasn't standardized as Pokemon with just a K until the English localization. There's a great article available online from Twitter user Dogusu's Backpack all about the subject, which I will go ahead and link in the credits in the description below, so a big shout out to them for helping to compile all of this information. Gen 1 was definitely a very fluid time for the series, where lots of things were changing even after release, and this even extended to the games as well. Game Freak were constantly wanting to tweak and change things about the original Kanto games, because in not one release of the Gen 1 games is everything about the games identical. For example, lots of minor details like signs, fences, doors, flowers, etc. had their appearance changed between Pokemon Red and Green and the Japanese Pokemon Blue, and then were changed again for Pokemon Yellow after that. This also extends to even the English release of the games, as Pokemon Red and Blue are based on the Japanese Pokemon Blue, but Pokemon Yellow is based of course on Japanese Yellow, resulting in a change in the English games as well. Speaking of things that are different between each version of the games, the sound effect that plays when you save the game is also slightly different between each game as well. This was revealed to be an intentional easter egg left in the games by Junichi Masuda, which was revealed in a Japanese article from Nintendo Online Magazine, which has since been translated by Pokemon historian Dr. Lava. We've obviously talked a lot about how the original Kanto games had a lot about them that was cut and switched around, and that of course includes the Pokemon themselves. I talk a lot about cut Pokemon on this channel, but one that I haven't really highlighted too much is this guy. This is what looks like a Yeti Pokemon that was cut for unknown reasons, but it's believed to have actually been a counterpart to Electabuzz and Magmar. This is not only because it sits between Electabuzz and Magmar in the game's index list, as the cutting room floor points out, but also because this Pokemon's name, Boo, matches up with Electabuzz and Magmar's Japanese names, which are Elaboo and Boober, respectively. One thing about Kanto I haven't really touched on to this point are the Sevi Islands, so let's go ahead and take a look at them. Naval Rock is one of these islands, which serves as an event area for Ho-Oh and Lugia. And it's named as such because Naval Rock sits smack dab in the middle of all of the Sevi Islands, right where its own hypothetical naval would be. This location also fits the actual definition of the word naval as well, which is the central point of a place. Additionally, the name Sevi Islands comes from both the word seven and the Roman numeral for seven, which can be seen at the end of the word Sevi as V-I-I. -I. The way that you travel to the Sevi Islands is by going to the port in Vermilion City and taking a boat there. Vermilion City is notable not only for this, but also for its lightning American gym leader, Lieutenant Surge. 
All of these elements about Vermilion City are most likely inspired by the city of Yokosuka in Japan. While Vermilion's main inspiration is Yokohama, Yokosuka is a port city just like Vermilion, and more distinctively, also plays host to a United States Navy base, which is probably the inspiration for Lieutenant Surge as not only being the gym leader here, but also being an American character who is also in the military. On the subject of Lieutenant Surge, one of his early trading cards has one of the most noteworthy pieces of TCG trivia in existence. The background of the card Secret Mission from the Gym Heroes set, which features Lieutenant Surge, actually showcases a map of German-occupied Poland during World War II. If you look closely, you can see labels for cities like Warsaw and Bialystok, and you can even see the big Deutsch label in the center of the map, which is the German word for the term German. Moving along though, did you know that you can sorta, kinda, technically catch Generation 2 Pokémon in a Generation 1 game? If you catch a Missing No via the Missing No glitch, it can potentially appear as a Generation 2 Pokémon when attempting to trade it with a Gen 2 game, even though it's coming from the Gen 1 games. This happens because of the index numbers of these Missing No, which occupy empty spots within the game's internal Pokédex. These index numbers then match up with the index numbers of some Gen 2 Pokémon in the Gen 2 games, which makes them appear as such. A whopping 39 Johto Pokémon can be caught in the Kanto games this way, however, due to their glitched nature, none of them are actually able to be traded over to the Gen 2 games. It wouldn't be a Kanto Secrets video without Pallet Town, though, so let's go ahead and cover something cool about the original Pokémon hometown. According to a somewhat official and canon source, Pallet Town is actually named after the great-great-grandpa of Professor Oak. According to Pocket Monsters The Animation, which is a novelization of the anime written by the anime's original head writer, Takeshi Shudo, Pallet Town got its name from Pallet Oak, Professor Oak's great-great-grandpa, who lived in the town and one day became ranked number 931 in the National Pokémon Trainer rankings. According to the book, it was the first time that anyone from the town ever made it into the top 1,000, and the town went nuts and practically worshipped the ground that Pallet Oak walked on as a result. As such, they decided to rename the whole town after him, and that is how Pallet Town apparently got its name. If the anime and this Japanese exclusive novelization is anything to go by, that is. And those were 25 secrets about Kanto that you may not have known. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, and let me know your thoughts in the comments, and if you would like to see videos like this for the other regions as well. Be sure to subscribe if you're new to the channel also, and I will see you guys very soon with another video. Until then, as always, thank you all so much for watching this one, I really do appreciate it, and I... We'll smell you guys later.